edition of Sticks and Stones. I am your host, Brent Elrod, coming to you from the cozy confines here at the patio at the No Shoes Bar and Grill. We're here and get that out of the way so we can get right to it. I have an absolutely fabulous pairing today. I know it. I am going to be pairing Blanton's Single Barrel. Those of you that are on the live stream are getting to see the bottle. And those of you that are not on the live stream, you're just listening on the uh, podcast later on. You're missing it. You need to keep watching on like Saturday and Sunday afternoons because that's generally when I do these and I will pop up at the last minute and do a live stream. Anyway, I'm pairing that with an EP Carrillo Pledge. Now, this cigar, I actually normally, I, I, I will generally throw away the, the cellophane because I when I take the picture of the spirit and the cigar together, I don't want the cellophane on it, but I held on to this one because this cigar is supposed to be the bomb. Uh, This was the Cigar Aficionado's 2020 Cigar of the Year, and it is the highest rated number one that they've had at 98 points. So, you know I, I trust Cigar Aficionado. If they say it's awesome, then it's awesome. So, let's dive right in. Uh, the Blanton's you know, original single barrel bourbon, and it is it is a storied bourbon that is hard to get. Uh, it includes some of the biggest names of the Buffalo Trace Distillery. For those that might not be up on Blanton's, which I kind of find that hard to believe, but you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and go with it. Uh, Blanton's is made by the Buffalo Trace Distillery which actually makes almost all of the hardest to get whiskeys out there. They, they make uh, Stag, they make, uh, of course, Buffalo Trace, they do, uh, they do Weller, uh, Pappy Van Winkle. Pretty much, if it's hard to get, it's, it's from them. Uh, but it's hard to get because it's really good. Uh, somebody I saw on uh, social media the other day, he was like, all right, so what is everybody drinking today that is not from the B- BT Distillery, Buffalo Trace? <laughs> of course, there wasn't a whole lot of response because you pretty much everybody's drinking something from Buffalo Trace. Anyway, let's get back to the story. Uh, it really, the story begins when, uh, at the top, when uh, Colonel Albert B. Blanton was the president of George T. Stagg Bourbon Distillery. That's what we know now as Buffalo Trace. Uh, until until 1952. Uh, that, uh, anyway, uh, during that period, Elmer T. Lee, another name that you see at Total Wine or wherever you go to buy your, your spirits, that is hard to get. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, okay, Elmer T. Lee, sorry, I lost my place. Uh, he worked under Blanton. And as Lee was getting ready to retire, uh, he, he wanted to have um, just one last spectacular product. So a year before he retired in 1985, Lee introduced the first commercial single barrel bourbon and he named it Blanton's in honor of the late Colonel. That's a great story. Like I said, it, 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 you, telling that story, you're using some of the some of the most high-profile names in the bourbon industry as far as products go, and uh, it's a great story. You know, I was researching it for this, and uh, I was amazed at some of this stuff. But let's get on into the Blantons here. I'll go ahead and read this off because it, I figure it's probably important. Uh, this whiskey was dumped on July 24th of 2023. Today is January 18th, I believe, 18th, or not January, February, February 18th of 2024. So 
So we're now approaching a year post dump. Um, it came from Barrel, 1953, uh, in Rick 60, and uh, it was uh, individually selected, filtered, and bottled by hand at 93 proof. I normally don't go into quite all that detail, but I felt it was uh, it was worthy of this product. Uh, now, today, Buffalo Trace is owned by Sazerac. Uh, and then you have the, the Blanton's, Distilling Co Blanton's Distilling Company, uh, and the distillery is Buffalo Trace. So it's it's kind of all blended in there together. You have to kind of figure it out. Uh, it is, the release date's ongoing, but as I, like I just read to you, there are, it's, it's gonna be, while the profile may be the same, it's gonna come from a different rick house, a different barrel, uh, different date, all that kind of stuff with each bottle. Uh, it's 93 proof, which is 46.5% alcohol by volume. It is a non-age statement and the mash bill is not disclosed. Let's go ahead. I did start breaking the seal just to ensure I was able to do this without it being, uh, you know, embarrassing. But so the seal is off. There's there's the horse and jockey. And I'm so excited. Oh, yes. Mm. All right. We're going to glass some up. I jokingly said to uh, friends, uh, by the way, Mrs. Sticks and Stones, my birthday is uh, Lincoln's birthday, February 12th. Mrs. Sticks and Stones managed to procure a bottle of this this bottle for my birthday uh, I was very thankful oh and uh, she's a wonderful woman sorry you all don't get to marry her but she's mine all mine all right give it a swirl I see some really great legs and this is a just a really beautiful kind of deep golden oak color uh, and, and like I said, it's, it's got some really wonderful legs on it, on the nose. I get uh, uh, honey and vanilla, some tinges of uh, orange peel, maybe a little like caramelizing sugar. I pick up some, some light florally notes and just kind of a hint of baking spice. Mm. All right, I, I can't wait any longer and I know you can't. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this a try. That is delicious. Mm. It is it is worth the trouble and the money, guaranteed. Oh, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna start describing yet. I'm gonna take another drink. Mm. Give it a little wash around there. All right, <clears throat> first. When it first hits your tongue, you get this, these sweet notes of kind of a creamy caramel, caramel, wherever part, part of the country you're from. You get uh, some more honey and vanilla, like was in the uh, nose, but there's some brown sugar in there, which is a little different than the nose. The nose was kind of a caramelizing sugar. Uh, and there are some, some faint notes of leather and oak that just make this uh, kind of the classic bourbon profile. And the finish has a nice, sharp, kind of rye spice bite to it, but it's not too much. It's just enough to kind of, they kind of let you know it's there. And, uh, and then you get more vanilla and more caramel and some leather and oak there on the finish. Man, this stuff is delicious. If you haven't had it, 
you need to try and find it. Mm. Actually, I probably drank a little bit too much for... Sorry, let's see if I can... There it goes. Put a little bit more in there. I, uh, I was joking with uh, some friends of mine that uh, I had been. I told them what I, I had gotten it for my birthday, and uh, I said, "Yeah," I said, "and I'm going to be drinking it out of a sewing thimble, It'll make it last as long as possible." So, but let's move on because we have, uh, you know, based on Cigar Aficionado's uh, rating of this, and it was their cigar of the year, but I can only think of one other cigar that I have seen a 98 rating on, and I believe it was a Padron, one of the anniversaries, like maybe the 64. And I may be wrong with the with this specific stick, but uh, yeah, I mean, so that's, that's what you're talking about here. You're talking that caliber of cigar. Uh, and I couldn't just pick any stick for this pairing. I couldn't do it. I had to find something that I knew would just like knock it out of the park. Uh, so I looked long and hard and I came up with the pledge. Um, as I said, Cigar Aficionado's 2020 Cigar of the Year. It is a, a 98 rating. This particular Vitola is a five by 50 on the ring gauge. The filler is Nicaraguan. The binder is Ecuadorian. And the wrapper is a beautiful dark Connecticut Habano. It is uh, manufactured at uh, Tabacalara Le Alianza, Dominican Republic. Uh, it has a visually, a, it's a kind of a soft box press. I'll see if the, I don't know if the live stream will pick it up or not, but it's somewhat of a box press. It's a box pressed with rounded edges, corners. Uh, it's oily and dark. Uh, there are uh, there are some quite a few veins. Well, not quite a few. It's it's minimally veined, but the ones that are there are very pronounced. Um, it has uh, tight yet visible seams, um, and it has a pretty good amount of tooth to it. I was looking it over before I started, and uh, I was just I was like, man, there's all kinds of little little tooth sticking up all over this thing. Tooth. Uh, for those that may not know, uh, tooth is little pockets of oil in the uh, wrapper. And when you look at the wrapper, you can see just the tiny little bumps. Uh, but that's what that is. And as, you, as, it, as the stick heats up, those will tend to pop and they'll form little bitty tiny wet spots on the stick. So don't think that something's wrong with your cigar. It's perfectly fine. So, uh, and it has a very large double cap. <clears throat> now, and also, I don't normally talk about the bands too much, but this dark Habano wrapper, uh, this the blue and gold band on this is very striking and really sticks out. They did a really great job on this stick all the way. So I'm sure it's gonna smoke as well as it looks. Now on the nose, I get a, uh, a chocolatey cocoa kind of sweetness. Um, I get some leather and cedar. Maybe some hints of barnyard down near the foot. And then just some slight hints of almond. All right, let's give it a cut. I'm using the C car V cutter. V-cut is my, uh, my preferred method of cut. Uh, different strokes, different folks. Very good cut. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it gives me the right amount of draw, the right amount of airflow through the stick. Uh, but I do use punch and occasionally a guillotine. I'm probably, that's the one I use the least. Now on the cold draw, Uh, I get some more cocoa, but uh, 
I also get some kind of dark roasted coffee, not quite an espresso, but starting to get up there. There's some earthiness, but also a little bit of a richness like uh, kind of saddle leather. I get some hay, and then there is just a little hint of kind of a vanilla sweetness. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Uh, Rocky Patel Envoy, five torch. My favorite, uh, my favorite lighter. Oh, and I apologize if I'm sniffing. It's, it's like 50 degrees out of here. <clears throat> Kind of, kind of chilly, uh, but show must go on. Okay, I get uh, kind of a uh, caramely sweetness. Uh, there's some cedar and a little bit of leather and earth. There's also some tinges of like uh, fresh baked bread, uh, some roasted peanuts. Uh, on, now on the palate, there is espresso where it was more like a dark roasted coffee on you know, the cold draw. But uh, adding the heat to it kind of bumps it up to more of an espresso. Then you also get uh, some hay and a little bit of peppery spice, but I also believe that there is, when I first lit it, there was a little bit of tartness initially. I have to kind of watch as I go along and see if it stays in there because I didn't really catch it off the next couple of puffs. <laughs> A really great cigar. It is really great. All right, we're gonna try them together. Wow. Oh, you may notice I do this. Not really for any reason, I just like it mainly because I love the way, especially when you're talking about a really good cigar, the way the smoke will just hang in the glass right above the spirit. I just like it. So it doesn't do anything. There's no big secret about that. Just, I, I like the way it looks. Actually, this one is pretty cool because it, it just keeps kind of drifting around in a circle very slowly. Okay, on with the show. Uh, now you know, I mean, both of these are premium products. They're known for their exceptional quality and craftsmanship, but honestly, you cannot fathom the luxurious smoking and drinking experience until you taste it for yourself. The, uh, the Blanton's rich and complex kind of profile with notes of caramel and vanilla and oak they create this um, kind of smooth and uh, velvety finish that gives it a unique depth of flavor that is a perfect complement to the flavors of the uh, EP Carrillo Pledge prequel. Uh, the Pledge is a pretty much a full body smoke with uh, the hints of leather and earthiness and some spice and it is a wonderful compliment to the spirit. Uh, I mean, I could, I could keep trying to go on about it, but I think you're getting the point that these are, these are really great together. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a little more here.
it always seems like the better the cigar, the longer the hang when I put the smoke into the glass. Like I said, doesn't really do anything. I think it's cool. So, but I generally only do it when I'm recording because I don't normally drink out of a Blencarin. Uh, and normally I am uh, uh, just using a regular old fashioned glass. So, uh, unless I'm having, you know, something mixed like old number seven and Coke Zero. Hmm. Really good smoke production off of the stick. It is uh, is burning hey, just a hair wavy, not bad at all. And it's so so minor, could just be my light, or it could you know could be this way it burns. But uh, nothing that I see that is uh, in any way taking away from this 98 rated cigar. I'm I'm gonna have to rate it pretty high. Uh, yeah, wow. I'm I'm kind of you know in I'm in my own little world but you're with me so all right uh, for the, those on the podcast I'm gonna go ahead and burn this down to the halfway mark and uh, then I'll come back and give you an update and you guys on the live stream hang on just a second hey stoners I am back we, uh, we are here at the half. I still have the live stream folks with us. They have been enjoying this cigar right along with me. Uh, and I have to say, I am experiencing Nirvana, not, not the group, uh, even though I did like the group. You know, hey, uh, music side note, I heard that the baby, the one that was naked on the picture of their, their big album, that he was suing for sexual harassment or something like that child porn I don't know I was I'm like seriously is that where we're at today but you know look at the news that is where we are today uh, back to this because this is what you're here for each puff there's a puff and each sip <sighs> brings out the kind of new layers of flavor uh, in the combination the, uh, the sweetness of the bourbon, and it's not overly sweet, it's, it's, it's just, just right sweet, uh, complements the, uh, the little bit of sweetness and some of the spiciness that is uh, in the cigar while the, the smoky notes uh, combine to create kind of a symphony of flavors that uh, just two-step across your palate. I don't think you'd be two-step into a symphony, but you know. Uh, anyway, here at the half, the, uh, the kind of the uh, caramel, caramely sweetness has kind of, uh, kind of faded a little bit in the stick and the spiciness has pulled back to, to some extent. Um, but other than that, Pretty much the stick remains the same. There's not really a lot of anything like really new uh, and surprising. It's just the flavors that are there have kind of gone back and forth uh, as we move along through the stick. Uh, for those of you that are listening on the podcast, uh, uh, I've been watching the stick. It burns rather unevenly, not terrible, but... The people that were on the live stream, they've been able to see it. I've showed it to them several times as it's kind of the, uh, the, uh, the uneven parts have kind of uh, come in and gone out, changed on the different sides of the stick and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it appears to be uh, just the way the stick is. Uh, and I, I couldn't, I mean, you know, I couldn't be happier. The Blanton's is making complimenting every single leaf that is in the stick and I am just thrilled with it. Uh, I am going to go ahead and burn this the rest of the way down to the band and then I will come back and give you an update. <clears throat> Stoners, 
stoners. This pairing is sadly coming to an end. I know we're all shedding a tear uh, because I was just talking to the people on live stream. This is my first time ever doing a complete live stream of a parry. I normally break off at the halfway mark, talk to them for a little while longer, and then shut them down and you know finish up. Because you know you, you gotta you gotta fill in like a half hour of time with talking uh, because I've been on 56 minutes on the live stream. So yeah. Now my, my jaws are starting to get sore. Don't make any jokes. I don't want to hear that's what she said. I, <laughs> I knew as soon as I spit it out, <laughs> that's what was going to happen. But, uh, Casey, you are exactly right. E.P. Carrillo, prequel pledge or pledge. Pledge prequel. I may have it backwards. Uh, this is a definite, you must try this. And if you can get a hold of the Blantons, got to have some of it. It, it is, man, it's, it's like no other. I mean, and some of it, you know, could be the mystique of it. it just makes it taste better, you know, knowing that. Uh, but anyway, all right, so let's see. Uh, all right. This has sadly come to an end. Everybody shed a tear. Uh, the, the complexity of the flavors in, uh, in the cigar, we'll take another puff here. And we are literally like a quarter inch from the band for those of you on the audio. Uh, they paired just beautifully with the nuanced palette of the Blanton single barrel bourbon. And we'll take another drink here. And there's literally like a tablespoon left in the glass. Uh, they created this just harmonious balance that enhanced both the smoking and the drinking experience. Uh, the only real change kind of toward the end was uh, that the espresso that was up in near the beginning Kind of, uh, kind of fell back to more of um, kind of a medium roast coffee. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I used to own a coffee house, uh, so I know a little bit about coffee. Uh, until I was ran out of business by the evil green lady, uh, the uh, the leather became a little more dominant. And uh, sorry, I was eating pistachios before I started all this, and I had uh, I had a piece of pistachio all of a sudden in my mouth. Uh, anyway, um, I did get some, uh, I picked up some notes of kind of a black cherry. Hmm. Going to take the band off of this or it's going to set up, going to set on fire. Can't have that. Well, I don't know. It, it could make for some good, uh, some good ratings. It'd be like, dude, you need to go, you need to go watch this, this sticks and stones episode. His cigar sets the, sets the band on fire. It was hilarious whatever to get ratings, you know? I'm trying. Somebody asked me, how long have you been at that? Uh, I think I was at a cigar shop a week or two ago. And they're like, yeah, okay, so you, you just, how long you been doing it? And I'm like, oh, it's, I'm in my third season. They're like, really? Yeah, I've been at it a while. So anyway, this band, it is, uh, that is another thing, all right? Even the band is well constructed. It took forever to peel that off. Uh, anyway, I picked up some notes of black cherry. Overall, uh, I really probably prefer cigars that, uh, that don't change a whole lot because then you're having to try and gauge, is that still going with my spirit as well? And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So it, it's really, to me, it's really good. I, I'm, I, hey, Really complex cigars, really complex spirits are great. Uh, but I kind of prefer them if they're kind of stable throughout. You know, um, the, the, they may rise and fall in the first half, second half, you know, that kind of thing. I, I typically don't do the thirds. I have a pretty good palate, but I don't know that I'm, I've got that good a palate, you know. But uh, anyway, so I do halves, first half, second half. And it's easier for audio, too.
in the end, for anybody that has jumped on right here as we're about to close things out, the E.P. Carrillo Pledge is an outstanding cigar. It was Cigar Aficionado's 2020 Cigar of the Year and was the only 98 rated cigar at that, at that time. I haven't looked to see if somebody else, I think a Padron, one of the anniversary editions is rated 98. But it is excellent. You get uh, kind of a creamy caramel, some vanilla, like caramelizing sugar, uh, and uh, vanilla, and a little leather, and a little oak. There's a little bit of spice in there, but not much. In the beginning, there was, when I first lit it, there was a, a, a like a blast of tartness, almost like a kind of a lemony tartness, but it was like the first puff and it was gone. Never saw it again. Uh, amazing. Great cigar. You need to try it. And it works perfectly with the uh, Blanton Single Barrel. The Blanton Single Barrel had its own. It was kind of the you know perfect bourbon profile. You had uh, you had like a little bit of uh, orange peel. You had some uh, brown sugar, uh, some vanilla. Uh, there was some uh, leather and some oak in there. And the leather was kind of a, like a rich, saddly kind of leather. Uh, and uh, perfect combination. I hope you have enjoyed this pairing as much as I have enjoyed bringing it to you. This has probably been one of my most enjoyable. Um, please leave me comments. I love hearing from you, um, and I'd like to know what you think. Uh, if you've tried the cigar, if you tried the spirit, if you tried them together, uh, let me know if you want to hear. If you want to see anything specific, particular cigar, a particular spirit. Now the spirit has to be something I can get a hold of. I was I was lucky. Mrs. Sticks and Stones managed to get this for my birthday. You're not going to see any Pappy Van Winkle being paired anytime soon. Uh, I can't afford that, uh, but. Love hearing from you. Please hit like, subscribe, share, notify. Ring, ring the notification bell so you know when I drop new stuff. Because I said this kind of in the beginning, uh, uh, I don't really ever plan on exactly what time I'm going to be out here. Depends on the, you know, I'm on, I'm on the patio at Sticks and, at uh, the uh, No Shoes Bar and Grill, and uh, so. It may not be exactly the same time all the time, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, I'm actually, I think I'm probably, I'm, I'm, I, I work for Big Brother, so I'm, I'm off on President's Day, and I'm thinking about recording another one tomorrow, uh, and I'd be live streaming again. And it's actually supposed to be a little bit more tolerable weather. Beautiful blue skies out here, but it's like 50 degrees. Uh, tomorrow, I think it's supposed to be in the 60s. I'll probably end up recording another episode tomorrow. Kind of get me a little bit ahead. But go by, visit our website, sticksandstones.com, S-T-I-C-K-S-N-S-T-O-N-E-Z.com. Uh, there you can find uh, past episodes. You can scroll through and see if there's anything that you specifically want to listen to. Um, you can read our blog posts. I have blog posts about all kinds of stuff. I did the Boston Tea Party one time. I've done uh, cigars. I've done alcohol. I've done cigars and alcohol. I've done a little bit of everything. I try and make the blog where you can go and scroll through and find something that interesting to read about. Uh, there is also a page there with our affiliate partners. Go by and see our affiliate partners, like the folks over at Fanatics, where I got this wonderful uh, oh, sorry, I forgot my microphone's down there. This wonderful uh, Texas A&M uh, hoodie because it's gold. Underneath, I have a Freedom Fatigues uh, Second Amendment revolutionary flag. Um, Freedom Fatigues and Caliber Coffee are our two veteran-owned affiliate partners. Click on their links, go out to their, their sites, and pick you up some great coffee and some great... Patriotic gear at Freedom Fatigues. Uh, they're, they're veterans just like I am. Support them. They're trying to make their way in the world after spending their career keeping you safe. Least you can do. You know what I mean? Uh, the uh, Also, 
True Classic, uh, True Classic Tees. Love those folks. And Tip Top Proper Cocktails. If you haven't gone and watched the video I did uh, this last week about uh, the Tip Top Proper Cocktails, you need to go watch it. It's really great. Uh, I, I had like six different uh, canned cocktails and I opened every single one of them and gave you my thoughts on all of them. Uh, Tip Top has some really great pre-mixed cocktails. I love their espresso martini. It's awesome. I've got some ideas uh, that involve uh, rum chata and uh, Blue Chair Bay uh, mocha, mocha java rum cream and uh, maybe even some drizzling chocolate. Yeah, I've got, I've got some ideas there. You need to go check that out. And there will be a link in uh, the description of this episode that will take you to Total Wine, to this spirit, even though you're not probably going to be able to get it, uh, and to the cigar at Cigars International, where you should be able to get the cigar. Uh, that way, while you're listening to this, you can go out there and just be perusing through, order you some cigars. Maybe if you got lucky, you could uh, get you a bottle of Blanton's. But, uh, you know, anyway... Until we get to be together again, keep your sticks dry, your stones cold, and have a great day.